Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fun Element tutorial. My name is Li Fu Wang, and today we're going to learn about access symmetric problem. And we're going to learn about how to design a bellow. So here's the geometry of a bellow. Bellow is a axosymmetric, has an axosymmetric geometry. And the distance between peach and peach is 20 millimeter. Everything is in millimeter here. And also <clears throat> the inner radius is 50 millimeter. The outer radius is 100 millimeter. All the corner has a three millimeter fillet. And and, and besides, you have a 20 millimeter for the end inlet and the outlet of the bellow. So the bellow is under an internal pressure of 5 kilopascal. <clears throat> and the material is polyethylene, which is, uh, has an elastic modulus 100 megapascal. Poisson's ratio 0 0.35 and the yielding strength is 5 megapascal. Boundary condition we are going to use is for the top surface, we fix the bellow. And for the bottom surface, we apply a prescribed displacement 25.4 millimeter, which is one inch. So before we actually went through the abacus GUI, we can go through some details when we apply the model. First is there's no need for plasticity analysis. We can use only elastic constants and make sure the maximum one meter stress is smaller than the yielding strengths. It's up to your design requirement. Sometimes you can add a safety coefficient, <clears throat> safety factor. And second thing is the geometrical deformation for the, for the problem may be pretty large. So there may be internal sliding between the surface. So for that, we should apply the contact friction for it with a friction coefficient 0 0.15. So the third thing is we need to apply the reference point and coupled with the load. And later what we want to see is how much load we need to apply to reach the prescribed displacement. That means to reach this prescribed displacement. And then we will compare the axisymmetric case with the real geometry. Both of them have a thickness of 1.5 millimeter. And finally, the unit we are going to use here is Newton millimeter mega Pascal set. Of course, you can change it to Newton meters and Pascal sets. It's up to you. If you, you, if you change to Newton meters Pascal sets, you need to reassign your elastic modulus and recompute all your dimensions. And that's all for the uh, problem statement. Let's see the abacus GUI. So here is the abacus GUI. First, we need to create the part. Let's do a axisymmetric problem first. Now actually, let's, uh, let's do the 3D modeling first. So 3D geom geometry 3D. 3D deformable 
we want to shell for that because comparing the comparing to the uh, dimensions, the thickness is actually 1.5 is really small. So we can use a shell element from revolution and approximate size. Notice that here is in millimeter. So approximate size, let's say, is about, this is 120. So let's do 200. Now we have our sketch plane. First, we can make our point. Let's make this point first. This point has, uh, uh, let's say this is x axis, this is y axis. So this point, the coordinate should be 50 minus 20. So 50 minus 20. After you have that, we can count how many points do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven points in total for this line. And all of them has a 20 millimeter in Y coordinate difference. So we use pattern here, linear pattern, and select the point we just create. And for direction one, which is X direction, we don't need any pattern. Sorry, we make it one. And for direction two, we want seven points. By doing that, you have all your points here. Now let's see the outer radius. Outer radius is 100, and the first point is Y coordinate with 10. So it should be 110. Uh, let's create a point, 110, sorry, 10. You can see the point here. So again, we do the linear pattern. Since we have one, two, three, four, four points, so this linear pattern should be one, four. After you finish that, just connect them together one by one. And now your geometry is done. So then next step is to assign the Philip. Philip is has a dimension of three millimeter for all the corner. So let's use the Philip here and apply the radius three and select all the combinations of edges. Once you're done, it should directly show you your dimensions, R3 here for all of them. And now our sketch is done. So the revolution angle, definitely we need 360, and then your real geometry will be here. Next step is property. We need to assign the material property. So your material property should be, uh, uh, 100 in elastic modulus and 0.35 for Poisson's ratio. You don't necessarily need to assign a yielding stress for failure criterion. So let's do polyethylene and elastic isotropic Young's modulus 100. Remember our dimension set is Newton millimeter megapascal here. So it's 100 megapascal 0.35. And then we create a section for that. P E sect. So it should be a shell element, homogeneous, and then the thickness value should be 1.5 millimeter. Material polyethylene thickness integration 0.5 is enough. So after you get everything assign your property to your geometry. PE sets, 
middle surface that that's okay from the section and down. Once it become green, it means it's okay. Next step is to go to assembly to create an instant. Create instant part. We are going to mesh on the uh, either on part or on instant. I prefer to use mesh on instant and then apply that. When your instant is created in blue color. And then the next step is we can start creating our step. Definitely this is a uh, steady state. So let's do a uh, coin like uh, uh, static analysis. Static analysis create Time is one, we don't need large deformation. And you can use this one by, uh, if your solution is not stable, but we can, right now we can just keep it there. So initial, temp, initial time make it a little bit smaller because we want, it, want to see the trend, how it actually deformed. And minimum, every other thing, Every other thing, we just set it as default, and that's it. Then we can create a few output and the history output. We will go back to this step later, but right now we can edit the few output a little bit. What we only need is this placement. Definitely, we need force here. Is not necessarily. We don't actually need contact. We don't need strain we don't need stress we need a vomit of stress and stress com component may be also useful so let's keep it there and then let's go to interaction as i mentioned before you should assign the contact with friction coefficient 0 0.15 to avoid the internal sliding. So uh, let's create the material property first. So let's call it in sliding, which is a contact and mechanical tangential behavior use penalty and change the friction coefficient to 0 0.15. After that, we can assign our contact. Our contact should be in during the static, during our process, and let's call it self-contact. So it should be a self-contact. Uh, for our whole geometry, it's most likely to happen for the brown. So surface to surface, uh, exclude, uh, exclude the uh, shell element thickness, and then internal sliding is our property and uh, everything looks okay just set a default and finished and then we create a reference point for that let's make it at the bottom surface which is zero uh minus 20 zero you can see the reference point here so we make a coupling, let's call it bottom surface. We make a coupling, select the constraint control point, which is the reference point, and then select the node region, which is 
This is kind of hard to select, so we can go back later. Let's make the mesh first, then it's easier to select. Here, first we need to, we can sign the uh, mesh type. So instead of advancing front, we can use medical access. And then next time, next thing is element type. We want our element type definitely is shell and every other thing just leave it there. It should be a S4R, which means reduce integral. And then we can create a seed for that. Uh, let's do two now. And then we mesh the cell. You can see that at the at the Philip, the mesh is not that good. If you want a better result, I would suggest you do the mesh line by line and make the Philip like finer mesh. But for now, we just keep it there. And once you have node, see you have node here, now you can select create set. Let's do bottom surface node. And your bottom surface, let's do feature edge here. And we select this edge. This is your bottom surface. Also, you need a top surface. Surf. So again, select the top surface node. Make sure that it goes around and then hit done. Now you have, once you finish your mesh, we can go back to interaction. Remember before we tried to create the coupling, but it's not done. So let's redo it. Let's say bot surf coupling. So select the reference point first. And then we need to select no region, which we already have the set, which is the bot surface. And kinematic, everything, leave it there. And <clears throat> we don't need to adjust this one actually. So, okay. You see that all the node is connect to your reference point too. Now we can go to the load, load part. First, definitely we need to apply the internal pressure. The internal pressure is uh, five kilopascal, which is five e minus three megapascal. So create load pressure in internal pressure. And then select this surface and definitely we want internal which is saying that it's brown so magnitude is 5 kilopascal which means 5 e minus 3 megapascal kind of see the load is all pointing outward just quickly check that low is all pointing outward, that means it's good. And then we need to assign our boundary condition now. So create, uh, definitely we need a fix the, sorry, fix the top surface. As I mentioned before, the top surface is fixed and the surface, Bottom surface has a pre-described displacement one inch. So we already have the top surface. Just make it fixed. Okay. 
then is the bottom surface. Bottom surface, we have a displacement input. Bottom surface. And, oh, I forgot one thing. Before that, we need to create another set. Let's call bottom surface reference point, which is geometry. Continue. Then we select this reference point to make it an uh, independent set. It's just one point, but it also represents your entire bottom surface. So when you're applying the prescribed displacement, like say displacement input, now we can select the set that we need, its bottom surface reference point. And we just need vertical input and the number for that, for that is 25.4 millimeter. Notice that it's positive, it should be positive. So it's a compression. The final step is we go back to the step, go to here in the history output, create another thing called reaction, or let's say applied load. So here we want some force, uh, sorry, not the entire model. We just need a set and we need the reference point set and what we are outputting is the reaction force for that. What we are trying to see here is we, cause our input is how large, uh, our input is a prescribed displacement. What we want to see is how much low we need to apply to reach that prescribed displacement. Okay. And everything looks okay here and everything is okay. everything is good. Then go to job here. So create a job called uh called model 3D. Model, okay. And then, uh, I want to use parallel computing. For doing parallel computing, you can go to performance and see that I have 12 logical processor. So probably I want to use 10 of that here. And Everything, if you sh you're sure everything is okay, then we can submit our job. Turn on the monitor here and see what's happening. It reports a warning. It says this one has a coupling and cannot include other constraints. Oh, it has a lot. First thing, let's see. First, you have a rotation degrees of freedom uh, for kinematic coupling. That means we actually, um, for translation degrees of freedom. So that means we actually don't really need that one. But it doesn't matter for your result. It doesn't affect your result. That's why it only shows a warning, but not an arrow. And the second one is, Sorry, the second one is, it's still about the coupling problem, but that's not a huge problem. So we don't need to, actually need to think about that. Well, the analysis is going now. This is relatively a large problem. 311 elements are distorted. Normally that means you're, that means your mesh is a little bit too large or either your deformation is too large. So change your mesh or your loading will always help you with that. But as long as it 
just give you a warning that means that you, the majority of the element are still okay so we can we can still just keep it there so any other thing looks not so bad and total time reaches one that means it's complete status says complete Here's the result we have. We can see the one misses just here. And we can, from the color, we can see where the stress is concentrated to. So normally the stress should be concentrated at the fill-up of the design. And it's clear that at the top and bottom Phillips, the stress is the highest. And the stress is 2.5. Remember that this is in megapascal. So it's 2.5 megapascal. Comparing to our strengths, we still have a factor of safety of two, which is not too bad. But if you want to increase the design, improve the design, then probably you need to increase the Phillips here. And the other thing is, because your stress concentration is at the fill-up, if you want a better, you want to better see where the uh, highest stress is, highest stress is, you, it will be better if you can make the mesh finer. But, and if you want to see what's inside the panel, uh, what's inside the bellow, we can select here to create a this group, a display group, and we can change to element, and then we can select probably half of that, or we can do X, Y, and then select exactly half of that, and use this to remove the selection. And then you can see what's inside. It's like uh, definitely on the fill-up. This is a shell element, so inside and outside should not have should not have difference. <clears throat> then one another thing you can do is to play the animation. It's a little bit too fast. Change the speed to like some moderate speed. You can see how it's compressed and how the stress is generated. And then the last thing we can do is to output the XY data from the history output. Remember we have a constraint on the reference to uh, reaction force on the uh, let me see I think it's this one so if we plot it we can see how large your reaction force is to reach your prescribed displacement and it seems like it should go to 72 or something so then we can save as a result uh, x y plot let's call it like uh, uh, x y one and that is everything of our 3d model now we can create this uh, axisymmetric uh, model for that. And let's save it. Save it as like a 3D, uh, 3D bellow. Now here's the new input. Let's create a part first. For axisymmetric, you need to select the axisymmetric and the 
deformable because this is a wire. We use wire and the approximate size is also 200. Again, similar to what we have for 3D model, we create a point of 50 minus 20 first and then use the linear pattern for doing that. One and seven. And create another point of 110. Use linear pattern for that. One and four. Use your line to connect all of that. And down. This, ah, sorry, I forgot to. If you want to see, I forgot to add a Philip. So if you want to edit the edit the sketch, you can go all the way to sketch and start editing. So what I forgot is the Philip, which is three millimeter from all the edges. Once it's done, just click down, and we will pop up a window say the feature is not generated. If you want to generate it, then hit something, and you will see a yellow uh, check mark here. So you click hit features and do regenerate, and it will show your feature. The feature look like a one here. Then it's property. Again, we create a property. PE with uh, elastic property 100 and 0 0.35 here. And then assign, uh, assign your elements. So this is PE section. Sorry, assign your section. PE sect and homogeneous shell and value 0 0.15, everything is the same as previously. Then assign the section, section me plane, yeah, in terms green. And then assembly, part one independent, yes. And then uh, this time let's do mesh first. We do still do two, see what happened. You can see that it is very coarse. And if you directly mesh it, you will see, especially at the uh, Phillips, you can see very coarse in interpolation. So that's not good. That's, that may give you some error. Seems the axisymmetric has way less element than your 3D model. We can always make it much finer. We do 0 0.5 here. Uh, or even 0 0.25 here. But let's leave it 0 0.5. So then we remesh. We have already remesh it. You can see that now is way better. You won't see too much change from the geometry and the and the mesh element. And then we go back once we have the mesh now again we create the set top node which is this one. It's a little bit hard to select. You can use by individual. Okay. And then create another one. Uh, set button node. And select the corresponding node. Now we can do interaction. Again, we 
assign a material property first, which is contact freak friction tangential behavior penalty 0 0.15 everything is exactly the same and oh uh, and assign the interaction and see when you assign that you see the step we only have initial that means we haven't created a step yet so let's create the step yet the step is still static uh, static general and again increment change it to 0 0.01 down and history output and field output we can assign later field output we can directly change here we don't need we don't need that much this time we just need translation uh translation and rotation distance we don't need strings we need stress we need misses okay and <clears throat> now we can assign interaction when you assign the interaction self uh static and then self contact and select the things you need and it's most likely self-contact in the in the inner surface which is the magenta one and then here is like a surface to surface and uh everything just leave it as like uh, what we should have well exclude the shell memory thickness okay <clears throat> then <clears throat> then there's the load uh, to apply the load first we create the fixed boundary condition and select the set of top and then we create our prescribed displacement displacement input select the set of bottom and only have u2 which is 25.4 pointing up yep and also you have an internal pressure which is internal pressure so select the surface and we're going to apply internal pressure so it's magenta and magnitude is uh, 5e minus 3. Check again, everything is pointing in the inside of the surface, then it's okay. Now, in the step, we create history output. And this time, since we only have one point, we don't actually need a reference point. We just need to select our sets and bottom surface and we don't need energy. What we need is the force and reaction force. <clears throat> we just need reaction force. And finally is the job. Create a job called axis metric uh, again memory uh, parallelization 10 of that and submit everything is okay then submit always remember to open the monitor to monitor the arrow message and warning message see is there anything not good Okay, so it means it can automatically give you one miss of stress because S already include one miss of stress. So we don't actually need to specific saying like uh, we need one miss of stress.
It says displacement increment contact is too large. We'll see what happens. You can see that something, definitely something wrong happened here. I'm sorry. I just find out what happened. Uh, <clears throat> when I create a section, the thickness I input is wrong. The thickness should be 1.5 millimeter instead of 0.15 millimeter. And that's why the result is, the displacement is so large. <clears throat> we submit again. Turn on the monitor. And again, we don't need to actually assign one Mises stress. And every file is here now. Now the analysis already went through. You can see the axiosymmetric problem is way more efficient than the normal like 3D model. And now we can see the result. And the von Mises stress maximum is 2.6, almost the same as the 3D model. And you can see that it's concentrated at the corner of the two uh, top and bottom two Phillips. And if you see the animation, this is how it deformed. So finally is the XY data. If you plot the history plot as we already have reaction force four here, you can see the plot is 72 or 73 or something. That's the reaction force you should have. If you <clears throat> uh, compare to the one we have, uh, I think it's this one. You can see these two are identical. That means either 3D model or 2D models gives you the same reaction force, but, sorry, I, either 3D model or the axisymmetric 2D model gives you the same reaction force, but this axisymmetric is way efficient than a real 3D problem. So that's it about the axisymmetric problem and also the bellow design. Hope that you can learn something from here. Thank you for joining the class.